Hello and welcome back to the KCC channel. I'm Rob and I hope you're having a wonderful day today. Today, we're gonna be jumping into some I don't work here, lady. Our first story today comes to us from Belle Zealous Ideal. I don't work here encounter gave me low key image issues. Let's jump right in. I wasn't really top of my class in high school, which was some small average school, but I was smart enough to get into a top tier university in my country. Now, this place was a huge culture shift for me. Granted, I met some brilliant, kind people who are still my friends six to seven years later, but I also encountered a lot of privileged rich kids who were probably just legacy admissions. This happened in my freshman year. I'm not from a poor family, but compared to some of these kids, I may as well be. I didn't really care about the way I dressed before. My university doesn't have a very formal dress code. You can show up in a t-shirt or something like that, so long as you aren't showing so much skin, and if the shirt doesn't have any profanity or vulgarity. So naturally, I would wear a lot of t-shirts and leggings. They're cheap and comfortable. Now, a lot of other students wear nicer things, branded shirts, polos, khakis and loafers, that sort of look. I had a lot of unpleasant encounters with a certain type of student, if you know what I mean. Months after orientation, when I was heading to class in my joggers and a university t-shirt, coffee in hand, some wild dude bro in a my parents are rich outfit literally runs into me from behind. Like, how do you not see someone in front of you? As he ran into my back, I spilled my coffee all over my clothes. He sees this. He slows down, takes one look at me, and keeps going his merry way. He even shot me a look like I was inconveniencing him for some reason. Another time, in the university parking lot, I witnessed some other entitled student in his brand new Audi straight up run over another student's foot and just drive off. But now for the I don't work here story. One day we, me and some friends, were at the mall next to the university. We were in one of those specialty sports shops that sells expensive jerseys and sports equipment when this other random student, he was wearing his ID card, sprints over to me and just suddenly starts talking to me. I'm really introverted so this took me aback. He was in the stereotypical my dad is rich outfit, branded polo, khaki shorts and loafers. He's asking if the shirt he has in his hands is original and if the price is final. I just say I guess so. He made a face like that doesn't sound convincing. Then he asks if they have any other sizes and where he can change. Then it clicks in my head. Um, I don't know man, you have to ask someone else, I don't work here. He seemed surprised and made another disgruntled face and just walked away. No apology or further contact. I think that was the first time I began to realize that how you dress really affects the way people treat you. I don't know exactly how to describe it. He wasn't overtly angry or rude when he talked to me, but he just sounded so bored and uninterested. Like he was only giving me half attention and speaking to me was some sort of chore. It was really demeaning. The scowls and angry looks are just icing on the cake. I mean, these small encounters added up in my head and I tried wearing slightly more presentable clothes by my second year. I mean, I know that all of those anecdotes I shared are the fault of entitled brats, but I was just so sick of seeing it and having it happen to me. I mean, to this day, I worry about how I dress because of those students. I graduated two years ago, but these freshman encounters still affect the way I see myself. Maybe I'm being sensitive, but the messed up part is dressing well actually did solve the problem. There were times I would be mistaken for a professor. I worked as a research assistant in my spare time, so maybe some of those students thought I was a professor because I hung out with professors and did some professor work. When people would bump into me, they'd apologize. It sucks how people treat you based on the way you dress. I hate this mentality because I don't really care for nice things. There was a time I used to because of university culture, but that mentality is so tiring and I don't know how people can enjoy it. I just try to look presentable now, nothing fancy, but I still randomly get anxiety that someone will literally run over my foot, verbally berate me, or laugh at me in public. This last one also happened in freshman year, but I don't want to share the whole story. Because they think they are rich enough to do so, it's exhausting. I think this is just a known thing, dressing respectfully will get you more respect. However, in this day and age, with all of the influencers and other drivel out there, 
I think the way we dress is quickly changing, and I kind of wish it wasn't. Do me a quick favor, have a look down below the video. If that subscribe button's still red, it means you're not actually subscribed to the KCC channel. Please hit that subscribe button for more daily Reddit stories. Second story today comes to us from Fire Dancer. No, little one, I don't work here. Let's jump right in. I know this sub is full of entitled idiots, but I wanted to share a nice interaction of I don't work here. I hit a bullseye to pick up a few things after work. I was wearing a red t-shirt with white writing saying NECA and a mask with a kitty nose and whiskers, so it's not surprising that I was mistaken for a worker. When I approached the self-checkout, there was a mom with three kids next to me. One of the little girls started conversation with, I like your mask. Do you work here? Do you like cats? I do like cats. I have cats and help rescue kitties without homes, but I don't work here. Her mom was trying to shush her, but I wasn't bothered. My youngest is now almost 18. Chatty little ones generally don't bother me. Where do you work? You look like you work here. It must be fun if you can wear kitty masks. I want to do it. I'm an electrician. She installs lights. I do more than that. I also run wires to help the pixies get to the lights to turn them on. I do think it's fun. Pixies, can I do it? You can do anything your little self wants to do when you grow up. We all finish at the same time and head out. I hear her yelling from about 75 feet away over loud cars, really good lungs. Bye, cat lady. Thank you for being my friend. Thank you for being my friend too. I drove home smiling. That child has better manners than a lot of people I know. I guess that says a lot about the parents. Nice to have an uplifting story for once, but it can't last. Our next story comes to us from The Gaming Mage. Angry Boomer argues with me while stealing the items I was in the middle of paying for. Let's jump right in. This happened about a year and a half ago now, just before COVID. I used to work in a restaurant. We had a deal with the local Aldi supermarket chain in big Europe that had moved to Australia in recent decades, where they'd ship in ingredients for us in bulk with a slight discount, and we'd order every two weeks and pay 50% in advance and 50% on pickup. Since they worked on a quota system, they loved us for it. On this particular day, I was going to make our fortnightly pickup. For some context, their uniforms in Aldi are a bright blue shirt with like charcoal trousers, shorts, skirt, etc. At the restaurant I worked at, there wasn't a uniform for back of house kitchen staff, only some guidelines, so I was wearing a bright blue t-shirt with some patterns on it. It wasn't collared like the uniform, but still blue. So there I was, chatting to the cashier, who by this point I was quite familiar with. She was pretty cute, and at the time, I was working up the courage to ask her out. So yeah, long chat, while she put through our massive order. Stacks of boxes of buttermilk, bags of flour, drinks, oil, etc. While we were chatting, I didn't notice the 50-year-old guy at the next checkout queue grabbing some of the boxes of Coke cans. I only noticed when the cashier pointed it out to me. So obviously I walked over and confronted him. I'd already worked eight hours with another six ahead of me, so I wasn't about to take any of this BS. I asked him, excuse me, what do you think you're doing with those? They're paid for. To which he replied, F off kid, paid for by who? Quit flirting with your girlfriend and get back to work. Now, I was raised to respect my elders and all, but this dude was the epitome of everything wrong with that generation. So I started going off on him that I didn't work here, and if I did, I wouldn't let him in the store. Don't even remember what I said from then on, since we were both yelling. Do know it was pretty colorful though. Eventually, the manager of the branch, who comes to help me load up so he can sort out the invoice, was called and had to drag us away from each other, so we didn't end up in a fist fight. Thanks to the cashiers, it all got resolved while I went and cooled off. By the time I got back in a few minutes after it was sorted and I could finish paying and load up. Pretty sure my old work still orders there to this day. Never did get that cute cashier's number because of COVID. Oh, come on, OP. It's not too late. March your butt back in there and get that number. You can do it. Life's too short to wonder what could have been. Our next story today comes to us from Certified Hood Classic. Angry man freaks out when he has to pay a ticket that I had nothing to do with. Let's jump right in. A little bit of background information. This happened a few weeks ago, but I just found this subreddit and thought this story worked perfectly for here. I work as a tourism counselor in a small town in Canada, situated near a national park. 
we share a building with Parks Canada so that they can provide information about the park and we can give information about the town. National parks have an admission fee, and if you don't pay the admission fee, you receive a reminder that you need to pay. If you do not pay, then the reminder turns into a ticket, gets sent off to a collection agency, and you have to pay a larger fine. I am able to deal with these tickets at my desk. In case of it getting too busy at the parks desk, this does not mean I have anything to do with these tickets. Let the story begin. It is five minutes before closing and I'm getting ready to shut down when a clearly distraught man comes storming up to the door holding a ticket in his hand. He gets to the door and realizes he does not have a mask, still required in Canada at the time. He goes back to his truck to get a mask and doesn't even put it on when he enters. My desk and the Parks Canada desk are situated across the room from each other and Parks Canada desk is closest to the door. So typically people will go to the Parks desk first but of course, since I'm writing about this now, this gentleman came storming right up to my desk, yelling about his ticket. When he gets to my desk, he throws his ticket at my face, which ends up being a critical hit and leaves me at low HP. He then proceeds to let me know that he was going to throw the ticket out, but his girlfriend had convinced him to pay the fee. Keep in mind, this fee is only $10. I ask him the required questions so I can charge him the correct amount and he starts yelling, saying, I've been coming to this park for 15 years and I've never had to pay an admission fee. This is BS. He asks how long we have been charging people to enter national parks and I lean over so I can see the person at the parks desk who should be dealing with this lunatic and ask her how long. 1984, she says. This nice gentleman decides that me and the woman working at the parks desk are lying about this and gets fed up. After yelling at me a while longer about how stupid I am and how I shouldn't be working this job, he throws a $10 bill at my face, draining the last bit of HP I had, and storms off. The woman working at the parks desk proceeded to thank me profusely for dealing with him as she should have been the one dealing with him. So the proper answer to this one if you really wanted to be fun with it would be, Sir, can I have your address please? And he'd kind of go, why do you want my address? And you'd say, well sir, 15 years of you coming into the park, we need to charge you admission for that. So I'd like to send you a bill. Ah, if only it were that easy. The last story today comes to us from Ancient Educator 76. You're cleaning up wrong. Oh, how the turntables. Let's jump right in. I worked for Safeway for a little bit now, but I was at a Fry's grocery store, Safeway's natural enemy in the Southwest, carrying a handbasket of groceries, wearing a Suns jersey, I think Robert Horry, non-ironically though, people took it that way, so I obviously didn't work there. So anyway, this lady with a handful of kids drops a jar of Alfredo sauce, and it makes a surprisingly big mess of broken glass and sauce that's the same color as the floor. A lady right next to her says, Oh, for Christ's sake, while I, out of pure grocer instinct, take my items, syrup, bisquick, six pack of bud, not bud light cause I'm a man, and make a border blocking off the broken glass. I was trained to do this by Safeway Corporate to block off dangerous situations with whatever I could until we could get a mop and bucket and signage. As soon as I start putting the stuff on the floor, oh for Christ's sake lady starts in on me saying, what the F are you doing? You can't just do that, that's beer for Christ's sake. She loved that phrase evidently. Meanwhile, store employees are coming over while lady with kids is pulling glass out of her ankle and oh for Christ's sake, stands there with her hand on her hip and her other hand extended as if to say, look at this crap that just happened. I'm using the box of Bizquick to scoop the glass more centralized while blocking that side with my body. The store manager is there telling me, oh sir, you don't need to do that, we'll clean, then oh for Christ's sake pipes in, that's exactly what I was trying. Then the manager interrupts her interruption by saying, look Mildred, we've already had this discussion, stop by my office, I'll be there in a minute. All the while the store manager is trying to make sure lady and kids are okay. Then Oak for Christ's sake Mildred says, Well, I'm obviously off the clock, but alright, I'll... Just don't come back except to drop off your name tags and scan card. I can't believe this. That butthole's cleaning it wrong. He didn't get a marker. He doesn't even work here. Ha, now she doesn't either. 
In a small update at the end, OP said, Story manager wound up talking to me about how I learned to do that with spills and eventually asking me how Safeway was treating me and three months later, I was given a shot at front end manager. After incident report was finished, of course, that shard of glass wouldn't have gotten into the poor woman's foot if, oh for Christ's sake, Mildred didn't overreact. Well, judging by the fact that she got fired on the spot, I'd say this wasn't the first time that Mildred spoke her mind. <laughs> Mildred, that's definitely an old Karen name. Check out all five OPs at the links in the description down below. Thanks for watching, have a wonderful day, and we'll see you tomorrow.